Hey, and welcome back to In My Honest Opinion. It is my YouTube channel where I will give you my honest opinion on a variety of subjects. And they can range anywhere from music to movies to TV, life in general, film equipment, just whatever we, we decide to talk about. You know, I have the hardest time figuring out what to do with my hands. I mean, it's hard enough to look into the lens to talk to you instead of looking at the, uh, the monitor on the side. But I'm trying to figure out what to do with my hands. I'm not cool enough to just stand here the whole time, you know, or put them in my back pocket. I mean, I guess I could pose like this. Well, hang on, I got an idea. Many hours later. All right, so I bought a table, and shouldn't be too hard to set up. So just give me a minute. Three hours later. All right, so now I have something I can lean on and be more authoritative and lean forward when I want to make that point or lean back. Or I can even put stuff on here. If I ever get a sponsor, I just want to show something off. All right, anyway, back to what I was saying. The question I get asked the most is how do I do my channel and why am I doing my channel? Now, there's a two very good questions. So we're gonna tackle the first one first. How do I do my channel? And we're gonna start off, there's really four things that I wanna point out. Sound, lighting, your background, and your camera. Might be a couple things we can sprinkle in here and there, but those are the four main things I wanna hit on today. Okay, so let's start off by talking about sound. And yes, I changed my shirt. Why is sound important? Well, how many things do you do in a day that are nothing but sound? I mean, do you listen to podcasts? Do you listen to books on tape? Do you listen to the radio? All of those things are sound only. And if it was terrible sound, you wouldn't listen to it. So how important is sound? Well, people who watch videos, they will forgive a lot of things. They'll forgive bad lighting. They'll forgive a bland background. They'll even forgive if the video's out of focus, as long as they can still understand your content. And the only way they're gonna understand your content is if your sound is good. Now let me give you an example. So right now I am recording out of the Rode Video Mic Pro. Uh, it's about three feet from me and the sounds should be coming through pretty good. But what happens when we take that off and you only have to listen to me through the, the mic that's on the camera? Okay, so right now it's the same setup. The only thing that has changed is we're now listening through the microphone on the camera that's built into the camera instead of the Rode VideoMic Pro. And it should sound pretty hollow, very low. You might not even be able to hear me that well. And granted, this is actually one of the better on-camera microphones. The camera I had before, which was the Nikon D5300, that microphone was not good at all. I mean, if you didn't have an external mic, you weren't gonna get anything. Now let me give you another example of bad audio. All right, so right now I've plugged in another microphone. I won't tell you which one it is because this microphone hasn't been calibrated yet. Right now, I can go into the settings and correct all the issues that you're hearing right now. But I wanna let you know that even with an external microphone, if you don't have it set up right, you can get bad audio. All right, so enough about that. Let's switch back to the good audio. Okay, so that should be back to normal. We're back on the Rode Video Mic Pro, back on top of the camera, so the sound should be good. Now, when I'm doing my channel, I like to keep things as simple as possible, so I just have the tripod, the camera, and the mic right on top, and the mic is feeding directly into the camera and not a audio recorder. So when filming, you wanna have the mic as close as you can to your talent's mouth. Uh, this mic is about three feet away from me right now, and it has an effective range, maybe about six to eight feet before it is starts to be a real drop off in quality. Now, a couple other ways to do this is with a boom mic, a shotgun mic. And basically that is a mic like this. And this is the Audio Technica AT. And what you'll do is you'll have it on a boom arm. It'll be just out of frame, pointed at your talent's mouth. Get it out, there it is. Be just out of frame. And these mics are designed to record everything in front of them and reject all the noise to the side. So if you have two people in a scene, you're gonna have somebody going back and forth like this with the mic, except again, it's gonna be out of frame. I have this one, and I also have the Ceramonic TM-SR1. The good thing about this one is that it comes with its own rechargeable battery, and they say it's good for about 150 hours. Now, I haven't used it for that long, so I don't know if it'll last 
for that long, but I haven't run out yet and I've only charged it once. Now both of these have XLR inputs, so you can use these with professional audio recorders if you need to. And you can also buy these little adapters that can also take these directly into the camera if you need. Now this one again has its own power supply, but because it has the XLR, it can use phantom power. This one needs phantom power. You know, it needs phantom power. So when I'm doing the channel, I have the audio going directly into the camera. When I'm doing something a little bit more robust, you know, filming a short film, doing something different, I like to use this. This is the Tascam 60D Mark II. Um, it has two XLR inputs on this side and a 3.5 millimeter jack. I like it because it has actual physical buttons. You know, it's not a lot of touch screens. You know, sometimes the old ways are the, are the good way. Now, you can use this as a preamp to run the sound directly from this into your camera. You see, you don't have to sync everything up later, but it saves to a memory card and you can sync it up later or run it into the camera. It has a little hole in the bottom. You can mount this on a tripod. You can mount the camera right on top of it. So with the Rode Video Mic Pro, that one costs about $199, brand new. I mean, you can find some refurbished, find some on sale, you know, different websites. Just starting out, I recommend the Tackstar SGC598. Uh, this one is about $25. And the sound quality, to me, is, is really good. Now, I'm not a professional anything when it comes to sound engineering or sound design, so I'm sure that if a pro was to listen to this and the Rode VO Mic Pro, they would be like, oh, this is different, that's different, this is better on the high end, it's better on the low end. You know, there'd be a whole 15-page analysis of why this mic on top of the camera now is better than this one. And that would go for any other mic out there. I mean, these mics, the ones that I have are $100, $150 or less. There are mics out there for $500 and up. So, now when you're filming a scene and you're within four to six feet of your actors, you know, from a close up to about six feet away, you can use these mics. Now, what do you do if your talent is 20 feet away? You can't keep a boom mic out of the shot because again, they're gonna be able to see that. No matter what arm you put on that, if you go so far out, you're just gonna see it. The mic on the camera is not gonna work because Again, that's only effective range of maybe six feet or so. What I like to use are lavalier mics. And these are little mics that you can clip on anywhere. You can hide them in the buttons of a shirt. You can hide them on the brim of a hat, under a collar. You can hide them anywhere. And from a distance of 20 feet, people aren't really aren't gonna see these. The good thing about this is that it comes with, it has a receiver, it's wireless, so transmitter, receiver. But this one has two transmitters and you only need one receiver. So you can mic up two separate people and you only need one piece of equipment to get sound from both of them. And it'll keep them on two different channels. So you can tinker with one later on if you need to. Because if you had them both coming into the same channel and one of the audio tracks wasn't good, then you'd have to redo both of them instead of just one. I like this. Oh, another good thing about it is that the audio recorder, the camera that I'm using, the Canon 80D, the wireless microphone, they all have headphone jack. And the headphones I like to use are the Audio-Technica ATH M30X. I'm gonna screw this off. And they have a little 3.5 millimeter jack that you can plug into any of these things so you can listen to your audio to make sure you're getting good audio. Because that's important, because it's a pain in the butt to put in a lot of work and find out that your audio sucks. Next, we're gonna be talking about lights. Oh no, what happened? Well, this right here is the exact reason why lights are so important. Because if you don't have any lights and people can't see what you're doing, you're basically the radio right now. Which is okay, again, if your audio is good, but people did, you know, click the button to see a video. So, why are lights important? This is why. Another thing about lighting is that it can shape your mood. It can show you, lighting helps you to tell the story that you want to tell. You want to be dark and mysterious. Okay, so now I'm the villain in any 1960s movie. You will pay me $10 million or I will blow up Canada. I actually have nothing against Canada, our neighbors to the north. I like everything about them. All right, so you have this light behind me, sets a mysterious mood. You want to set something to where it's very dramatic. Okay. So then we have the light coming from this side. We have this whole side over here in shadows. So that's very dramatic. You know, I could be all 
ah, you know, like that. So I have my background light. That light is behind me. That is strictly just to show the background. I have my fill light. And these are actually a little bit brighter, but they're good for the demonstration. And then I have my key light, which would be my main light. I'm in my garage. I could open up the garage doors, but then I'd have, you know, the dogs barking, folks cutting the grass, the cars going up and down the road. There were an ambulance siren a few minutes ago. So I would expose myself to all of that, but I could open the door and use those lights. Now, if you only have, if you don't have light and, but you have a house with windows, you can use that. You can go outside and do your channel. You know, just keep in mind of the other things that come into play when you're outside. But again, if you're inside your bedroom, your kitchen, dining room, living room, anywhere that has a nice window that has good lighting, and it's usually some room in the house that does that, then you can film there and it'll be just as good. Now the lights that I use, they are the Aperture Ameren Tri-8 lights. Uh, there's three of them and two of them are set to bright and one behind me is set to, it's called bicolor. It can go to either warm or cool colors. And right now they're all set on the cool colors. I will leave links to all of this in the description. All right, let's take a quick look at the background. This is my newest piece, just got it a few days ago, Darth Vader helmet. I'm into music, can't play a single note, but one day I'll learn something. I like to collect pops, not so much because they're pops, but because of the different things they represent. I mean, I got some from Spider-Man, Buffy, Tailspin, Power Rangers, Scrubs. You know, I have movies and TV posters up on the wall. I got Power Ranger Sword, Power Ranger Weapon, you know, more movies and TVs. Really being into the Marvel movies. You know, there's a couple of Power Ranger weapons that I made from hand, and I know that makes me really cool, so we'll go with that. Uh, Ant-Man and Black Panther helmets. We have the Beatles, Ninja Turtles, another Power Ranger. Again, more TV, cartoon, more Pops. We have Chandler from Friends. We have Prince, greatest musician ever. We have the group from the last video twice. Okay, so your background should represent the things you like. It should tell a little bit about you. Well, that's my opinion. I mean, I put the stuff up there that I like. There's more things that I have to put up, but the wall might not support it. But you can do whatever you want with it. If you want a blank wall, if you want it all one solid color, that's fine. If you want to have it in front of a, a, a window and just have whatever is driving by, drive by, then that's fine. But I will suggest doing something with it. Don't just leave it as a plain white beigey wall or whatever the, the new neutral color is. You know, make something out of it. Take some time with it. Show a little personality. All right, so now we've come to the backbone of the whole thing. You can't really make a video without a video camera. So I'm using the Canon 80D. I bought it from the official Canon website. Now, I bought it refurbished, so it was used but I bought it refurbished because it came from Canon. Now, if it had come from one of the other retailers or Bob's Burger Hut, then I probably wouldn't have bought it. But because it came from Canon, I felt safe doing it. I haven't had any problems with it. Plus they gave me a two year warranty when I got it. Now it came with two kit lenses, the 18 to 55 millimeter and the 55 to 250 millimeter. But I went out and bought a couple other lenses. One is the 10 to 18 millimeter, which is what I'm shooting on right now. That's a wide angle lens, so instead of being all up here in my face, you know, you get to see the whole room, get to see the whole wingspan. I bought a couple of primes. I bought the 24 millimeter prime, which is also a wide angle lens, but it's a little more condensed than the 10 to 18. And I've also, and I also bought the 50 millimeter prime. Uh, not the, the fast one, not the 1.2, but the 1.8. Now, I like to keep my lenses because, you know, all of these might've been maybe a couple hundred bucks each, but that's still a couple hundred bucks. I don't wanna have to shell out again if something happens. So I bought this nice case called the Porto Brace, and there'll be a link to that too. And each, and these come with these little padded pockets that you can put your lens in, and I feel comfortable about it. I mean, I'm not taking them off road in any way, so I don't really feel like, I'm gonna have an issue with breaking my equipment, but you never know. 
All right, so I just wanna give you guys just a quick bit of advice on how to get started with your channel. You know, before you go out and you spend a few hundred dollars, in my case, or thousands of dollars, in, a, in other cases, buying equipment, you can get some things going for maybe a couple hundred dollars. One of the first things you will need is a camera, because again, you can't make a video without a video camera. Now, before you go spend, you know, $4,000 on the Nikon Z6 or the Canon EOS RP, you know, check your back pocket, check your purse. Chances are you have a smartphone. Smartphones today have cameras that are almost just as good as professional cameras for doing some things. You know, it'll definitely get you started. Now, the audio on these things will suck, but the good thing about that is, all right, again, I talked about this one. This is the Tacstar SGC598. Now these are made to, be, to plug into cameras and audio recorders. They're not made for your cell phones, but they sell these little adapters. So, so far you've spent nothing because you have a cell phone and you spent $25 on this. I'll have the price for this listed in the description, but I don't remember it costing a whole lot of money. So this is an adapter that will turn this TRS into TRSS adapter. So basically it makes this work with your phone. Now this one is for an Android. So you'd have to buy, if you have an iPhone, you'd have to have the headphone adapter to plug this into for it to work. So you would need this adapter than the other adapter. But who knows, they probably make one for the iPhone. If they do, I'll list that one in the description too. So you plug this in. And you know what? Let's make it easier. We buy this. Um, this is from PNC, and I honestly can't remember the name of it, but you take your camera, you clamp it in, you tighten it up, and now you can go handheld with your camera. Now it has a cold shoe mount at the top where you plug, or you slide the microphone into it, and now all that's one set. And then you will plug this into your headphone jack. We'll just tuck that out the way. And now you're ready to film. Well, you're ready to film handheld. Oh, but you know, I want to sit it down like you and be on camera. Okay. Well, on the bottom of this, it has a little piece that screws out. And you can use that on this tripod. Now this tripod came from Amazon. This was $20. So you can put that on there just like that. Set it out in front of you about three to four feet away. Hit record and make your own videos. Now there's a lot of software out there where you can edit and you can edit directly on your phone. You can download this stuff to your laptop. So there's a lot of editing software that is free to very low cost. You can go with, you know, get the Adobe Premiere set, Adobe Rush. I personally, I use DaVinci Resolve 16. I use the free version, which does everything that I need to do, which is basically just cut and splice and adjust the sound. I don't do, I don't do color grading. That's outside of my wheelhouse. You know, I'm learning. And this is a brand new experience for me. You know, if I'm still doing this one year, two years, six months from now, I'll be able to look back at these videos and go, wow, that was really bad because my new videos will be better because each time you're learning new techniques, you're learning how to be more comfortable in front of the camera and you're just, you're just growing as a person. All right, so now you have all of your equipment and you're ready to go. No matter what level you're at, whether you spend a couple hundred bucks, or whether you spend $10,000, now you're ready to go. You got your room painted, set up the way you want, you got everything, so what do you do now? Well, I went back to YouTube and I started watching a lot of videos to try and get ideas, to try to figure out how to do these things. Now, this is the part of the show where I'm just gonna name drop all these people like I'm in the room with them all the time. But because I have watched so many of their videos, it feels like it. You know, like Ryan Connolly over at Film Riot. I would, I would say start off with the earlier stuff and work your way forward because as he's been growing as a filmmaker, his videos have done so too. So, so in the beginning, when he was just starting off using, you know, whatever Canon camera he was using, you know, it was a lot more simpler. But now he's gotten a little bit bigger, his budget's gotten bigger, so he is showing you more high-end things. Again, the stuff that he's doing now is still relevant, but 
I think you would get more out of it as a beginner if you go back to the beginning. I mean, they're celebrating 10 years, so there's definitely a lot of stuff you can learn from him. You know, there's Kevin over at the Basic Filmmaker. I mean, he taught me basic things like how to focus, how you focus in on somebody, you zoom in, you focus on their eye, and then you zoom back out, and you're gonna stay in focus with them as long as that person doesn't move around too much. So he has a lot of great videos. He has his own filmmaker course, but I, on the cheap side, I watch the videos. You got Darius Britt over at D for Darius. He gives you a lot of good information on, you know, just starting your channel, writing scripts, you know, lighting. I mean, everybody does about the same thing, but they all have, they all have their own spin on it. Uh, yeah, Think Media, uh, Sean Cannell. I'm probably saying it wrong, but Sean Cannell over at Think Media. I mean, he will tell you the best equipment to use at a certain price range. He will tell you how to get your your thing up and going. I mean, he gives you a lot of good information too. Um, Jeb and Dovey, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but Jeb and Dovey, he will give you a lot of information. He has a great channel. Then there's Peter McKinnon, Maddie Hapoya, you know, and these guys, to me, they're inspirational. You know, just some of the stuff they tell you. I mean, they're photographers and videographers up in Canada, but again, a lot of great information. Best thing I can tell you to do if you want to get your own channel is start small. If you're not ready to invest, or you don't really know what you want to do, then start small and just go step by step. You know, one of the things they tell you is to find your niche, you know, to find that one thing that you want to talk about. That's hard for me to do because I want to talk about everything. So this is the, my third show. And we're gonna see what happens with it. I mean, they've, they've been on different topics altogether. First one's about Halle Bailey when she was picked as the Little Mermaid. Second one was about Korean, South Korean girl group twice. And this one is about equipment. What's my next one gonna be about? We'll find out. But just do what feels right to you. We are all constantly changing and growing and evolving. So what you wanna to do today might not be what you wanna to do tomorrow. And it might not what you and it might not be what you want to do six months from now and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that you know you can be 75 80 90 years old and still change your mind about what you want to do and still head off in a different path i do want to thank you guys for coming out and listening to me rant and rave and talk about random stuff um, thanks for being a, a part of in my honest opinion and i will see you again soon